Hi and welcome back. So I recently read an article in The Conversation that talked about muscle mass, the loss of muscle mass that begins after the age of 30 and what we can do to prevent it. And the good thing is we don't need to have expensive gym membership or buy expensive home gym equipment. Enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and let's see what we can do to fend off this muscle wastage that starts to occur around the age of 30. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Bradley Elliott and published in The Conversation. It describes the importance of maintaining and even building muscle mass after the age of 30. As well as sarcopenia, studies have shown that muscle wastage also leads to poor balance, frailty and loss of independence, as well as being associated with a higher risk of diabetes, cardiovascular disease and even dementia. And there are links in the description below to the study and the articles I used to put this presentation together. While it is almost unnoticeable to begin with, nearly every cell, organ and biological process gets a little bit worse every year that we're alive. This starts around the age of 30. The sum of these processes is what we know as aging. For most of us, loss of muscle strength and muscle mass are some of the first most obvious age-related changes that we will see. While this might only start with a couple of extra aches and pains, over time, the lack of muscle mass can lead to a number of issues, including poor balance, frailty, loss of independence, dementia, etc. While researchers aren't entirely sure why muscle mass decreases so quickly as we get older, the good news is that we know that regular exercise can help lessen this impact and can even delay some of the inevitable muscle loss. Regular physical activity has also been shown to lower the risk of preventable diseases, also help maintain physical function well into old age and even improve some immune functions. Given how important muscle is for our health, the best way to maintain it after 30 is to keep moving. But let's say you're someone who hasn't regularly exercised in a few months or years or have never done muscle building exercises before. How do you start? First and foremost, it's important to know that aging doesn't mean you need to avoid heavy or intense exercise. Research has suggested that younger and older men, women as well, recover in a similar manner to heavy muscle building resistance training. This is provided that the training regime is tailored to each participant's specific fitness level. Given how important muscle is for our health, the best way to maintain it after the age of 30 is to keep moving. But let's say you're someone who hasn't regularly exercised in a few years or has never done muscle building exercises before. How do you start? First and foremost, it's important to know that aging doesn't mean you need to avoid heavy or intense exercise. Indeed, research has suggested that younger and older men, and I assume women, recovered in a similar manner to heavy muscle building resistance training. This is providing that the training regime is tailored to each participant's specific fitness level. That said, it's crucial to consider your abilities before you begin exercising. A common mistake made by people after being off training for a few years or even decades is trying to do what they used to do before or doing too much too quickly in the first few workouts. This could lead to injury, so it's important to build up the intensity of your workouts gradually. In the UK, the National Health Service or the NHS recommends that 19 to 64 year olds which in my humble opinion as a bracket is a bit too wide, should aim to be physically active most days and to do muscle building exercises at least twice a week. So what kind of muscle building exercises should you do? There are a myriad of different types of resistance exercises to choose from and all are more or less equally as beneficial as each other. Unfortunately, when people hear muscle building, they think of muscular people lifting heavy weights and grunting in the gym, but there are many more options out there. Keeping with the build slowly theme, muscle building can start with simple exercises such as brisk walking, taking the stairs or even leg extensions while watching the television. Watch this clip now about Matt Fraser. And if you don't know who Matt Fraser is, um, please look him up after watching this video, after watching this video, uh, and watch him talk through a real life example.
Going to the gym doesn't have to get overcomplicated. I remember mean, one buddy, he started a couple years ago, he's down 100 pounds. He would tell me like, how do I start? I don't even know where to start. It's too intimidating to walk into this huge warehouse gym and know what the fuck to do. And I was like, all right, come over to my house. I'll put you through a workout. The first workout was like 12 minutes. And it was just an EMOM, like every minute on the minute. We had four stations. And I remember we finished and he was like, all right, what's next? I'm like, no, you're done. Go home. Like, that's it. Don't change your diet. Don't go out and spend $1,000 on supplements. Little changes. I was like, we're going to do a 12 minute workout every day for a week. And then next week, we're going to make it 16 minutes and then 20 minutes. Keep doing it until it becomes normal and then do a little bit more. Once you are doing decent workouts and getting a full night's sleep, then then we can look at changing your diet a little bit. And once that's dialed in, then we can look at supplements. I think so many people, it's like, as soon as they start working out, they're like, I need the best supplements possible. And it's like, dude, that should be the least of your concerns right now. You have so many other bases to cover. An excuse, and it is just an excuse that people often use, is they can't afford a gym membership or they don't want to join a gym because they will feel self-conscious. That's okay. You can do all you need to do at home and I don't mean converting your garage into a home gym and filling it full of expensive equipment. There are literally hundreds of YouTube channels dedicated to exercise. And a quick search of exercise at home with no equipment will give you sessions that will keep you busy for months without repeating the same workout once. If you prefer a more structured approach, then follow a channel dedicated to one form of exercise, such as Pilates, yoga or calisthenics. Enjoyment counts for a lot. So choose something that you either like or you think you might like. So if you like dancing, maybe look into a channel that covers Zumba. Endurance-based exercises, such as walking, jogging, running, swimming and cycling, are also very good for you in multiple ways, beyond just building muscle and improving heart health. There is a very clear relationship between longevity and doing some form of light physical activity every day. However, it's important not to do too much, especially high intensity resistance based training. Some research has shown that doing more vigorous, high intensity physical activity than recommended is not associated with substantial benefits to longevity. But for clarity, this doesn't suggest that high intensity is negative in terms of health. Far from it. Just that more isn't necessarily going to be better for you. From a dietary point of view, many old people do not eat enough protein. Sufficient protein intake is vital to increase and maintain muscle mass, even more so if you're regularly exercising. Current guidelines recommend a minimum of 0.8 grams, that's 0.3 ounces of protein per kilogram of body mass per day for all adults. So for someone who weighs 70 kilos, around 154 pounds, that's 56 grams or just over 1.9 ounces of protein per day. But you will need to double this to 1.6 grams per kilogram of body mass if you're looking to build muscle. So again, for a person who weighs 70 kilograms, 154 pounds, they would need to eat around 112 grams, that's 3.9 ounces of protein per day to build muscle. This advice on protein intake seems to be especially important for physically active older people. That's those who are over the age of 60. It is also good to spread the protein you consume out evenly throughout the day to help your body absorb as much protein as possible from each meal. While muscle will still inevitably decrease with age, no matter how much you exercise, being physically active is still one of the best ways we know to maximize good health, fitness, lifespan, and more importantly, health span. And the earlier you make exercise a habit, the better off you will be in old age. This research uses 30 years of age as a benchmark. I think future research will look at the younger generation and conclude that muscle wastage as a disease of aging, much like diabetes and dementia, will soon attract the prefix young onset. I see so many, too many young people, obviously under the age of 30, having very little muscle mass, mainly because it's covered with a body fat percentage of over 30. Where this used to be the exception, it may not yet be the rule, but it is far more prevalent than it was 10 years ago. 
Of course, people are free to live their lives in any way they see fit, no pun intended, and I'm not a fan of body shaming, but to glorify a lack of muscle mass or excess fat in younger people and describe obesity as just another life choice or being brave and fearless, I believe is reckless and irresponsible. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Um, I do understand that for most people, exercise is possible, but for some, it's either impossible or very difficult because of some kind of medical condition. Now, if you are able but not willing, that's just down to a poor personal attitude. I recently had a conversation with a friend of mine who's going back to the UK from the Middle East, uh, ready for his retirement, having finished his contract here. And he talked about downsizing, which is which is um, understandable. All his children have grown up and gone away. One of the things he was keen about was that he was going to buy a bungalow, which is a one level house, as opposed to a house which has got stairs. And I said to him not to do that. Um, I said, you should actually get a house that's got stairs to the front door and then stairs in the house. Because if you do no other exercise whatsoever during the day, at least you're going to be going up and down stairs. His attitude, though, and it's similar to most baby boomers, of which I'm one, but although I'm at the end of being a baby boomer, uh, and moving into the next generation was that they've now earned this right at the end of their life to just relax and just wait for death to come. Uh, and for me, and I'm hoping for many of you, that is not really an option.